Okay, this is the fourth part of our recombinant DNA technology lecture, and in this lecture we are going to focus on gene therapy. So you can see in this slide there are plasmids, and we've already gone over plasmids. So we've talked about using plasmids to generate recombinant DNA. In other words, taking a plasmid and sticking in a foreign piece of DNA into that plasmid. Now in this slide, what this slide is showing is utilizing a plasmid to develop a new plasmid. So in other words, taking two different plasmids, cutting out pieces from one of the plas from both of the plasmids actually, and putting them back together and generating what is called a chimeric plasmid. So a chimeric plasmid is generating a new plasmid from two different plasmids. So for this example, we have a plasmid that has an ampicillin resistance gene right here. This plasmid is 4,000 539 base pairs in length. This plasmid over here has a canamycin resistance gene, two different antibiotics. This plasmid is 4,207 base pairs in length. Both of these plasmids, of course, have the multiple cloning site. And what's going to, and they, of course, they both have origins of replication. What is going to happen to make this chimeric plasmid is you take this plasmid, plasmid ampicillin, because it has an ampicillin resistance gene, and you cut it with the restriction endonuclease BAMH1 and another endonuclease HIND3. You cut the plasmid canamycin, P can, with the same two restriction endonucleases. So what's going to happen is when you cut P amp plasmid with BAMH1 and HINDI3, you are going to remove or cut out a 784 base pair piece of DNA out of this plasmid. When you cut the PCAN plasmid with BAMH1 and HIND3, you are going to cut out a 100, 1875 base pair piece from this plasmid. Now, this was designed very carefully you're cutting out a region from this plasmid that really doesn't have anything in it. You're cutting out a region from this plasmid here that contains the entire canamycin resistance gene. Then what you're doing, you're using the remaining plasmid from PAMP, which is 3,755 base pairs in length, and you are then going to ligate in, because they both have those sticky BAMH1 HINDI3 ends, you're going to ligate in this 1,875 1, base pair band, and you are going to then generate a brand new plasmid. So, 13, 16, so there we go, they match. This brand new plasmid, PAMP PCAN chimeric plasmid, has a total size of 5,630 base pairs. You can then now use this plasmid that contains both the ampicillin resistance gene and the canamycin resistance gene. You can use the multiple cloning sites that are in here, the other um, sequences for other restriction enzymes, and you would be able to clone in 
a DNA of interest, a gene from an, a, an organism or whatever you wanted to study, you would be able to clone this gene into this plasmid and use both the canamycin and ampic ampicillin resistance as selectable markers. So now, when you have these plasmids and you cut them with enzymes, things happen to them, right? So with the P-AMP plasmid, we, when you cut it with your two restriction enzymes, you are going to cut out a 784 base pair band. You have your plasmid and you have your little piece that you cut out. So when you run your cut plasmid, you add your enzyme, you cut your plasmid, and then you run this product on the gel, you get two bands. You get one band that corresponds to the 784 base pair fragment, and you get a larger band that corresponds to the rest of the plasmid. Now this linearized plasmid because it's not in a circle anymore. You get the same thing with the pecan plasmid. So the pecan plasmid had a much larger piece taken out of it. Oh, my computer is not cooperating at the moment. Um, so you have a much larger piece taken out of it. Now what's going to happen when you cut pecan with your two enzymes and then run this product on a gel, you are going to get your large 1875 base pair band that contains the canamycin resistance gene and you're going to get the band from the remaining linearized plasmid that's 2,332 base pairs. So whenever you see a question on an exam or you're, you have an assignment this week regarding plasmids and restriction enzyme cut sites and where they're gonna run on a gel, you should be able to figure out from a plasmid where it's cutting, which enzymes are being used, and how the cutting is going to correspond on an agarose gel. So now remember, you are going to take your um, plasmid and you are going to transform it into your host cell, which might be E. coli. You are going to make clones by taking your transformed E. coli and growing it up on, on agar media. Now with your chimeric plasmid that we just made, so we have the P-AMP and we have the P-CAN plasmid. So if you want to figure out which one of your E. coli contains this plasmid, you grow up your E. coli and your transformed E. coli in media containing both ampicillin and canamycin because you only want the bacteria that have this chimeric plasmid to be able to grow. So then you would take your colony and again you could grow it up and you can do a plasmid prep if you wanted to get lots and lots and lots of pure chimeric plasmids and then use them for another purpose. Cut them, put in a DNA, another foreign gene of interest, and then put that into E. coli or another host and study it. So when you get your chimeric plasmid and and you cut it with some ends after you purify it and you get lots of that plasmid, you can cut it with restriction enzymes and then run it on a gel and see. So we already said your plasmid, the P-AMP plasmid that is cut with your two enzymes will have two bands. 
So that makes sense, right? You have your plasmid, you cut it with two enzymes and you're gonna get one band and two bands. And depending on their size, that depends on where they're gonna run. The larger band is gonna run up higher than the smaller band. And we always have run a molecular marker so that you know approximately what size products you're seeing. Now the pecan plasmid, when you cut, you get your 1,875 base pair and your 2,332 base pair bands. Now let's say on your agarose gel, you had um, 20 different clones come up. You're, you're pretty sure because these bacteria grew on agar media containing both ampicillin and canamycin, you're pretty sure that each one of these has your plasmid, but you never know for sure. So what you need to do is you need to take one colony of several, so one colony here, one colony here, grow each one of these E. coli colonies up in media containing your ampicillin and canamycin antibiotics, do plasmid preps of each one of these clones, each one of these is a clone, cut the plasmid now with your restriction enzymes and see how they're running on a gel to make sure you have now a clone that has the chimeric plasmid that you need. So in clone number one, when you cut it, you have your 3,755 base pair band that comes from this remaining region of your P amp plasmid. And you have your 1,875 base pair region that was the canamycin resistance gene. So clone number one ha definitely has your chimeric plasmid, right? Your ampicillin gene and your canamycin gene. So you wanna keep cells from clone one and use those to generate your recombinant plasmid. Now clone two over here has the 3,755 base pair band from your P ampicillin. It also has the 1,875 base pair band from the canamycin resistance gene, but it also has the 784 base pair band and the 2,332 base pair band. So this plasmid, everything, um, all the pieces of DNA went in and ligated back together for this clone. So you may not want this clone because it's not what you were intending to make. You weren't trying to combine the entire, both plasmids together or that E. coli cell may have just taken up the two separate plasmids, the P. amp plasmid and the pecan plasmid, and you're seeing both plasmids now in, in here, not one chimeric plasmid. Clone three has the 3,755 base pair band from the P amp plasmid. It's got the 1,875 base pair band that contains the canamycin, it also has the 2,332 base pair band from the rest of the canamycin, and it's missing the little 784 base pair piece. So this clone doesn't have exactly what you were looking for either. So you would want to keep your culture from clone one, propagate those cells in ampicillin and canamycin antibiotics to select for those clones, those E. coli that have the, that plasmid and propagate your plasmid that way. So that is exactly how you would work with making 
various plasmids that contain the selectable markers that you need and sometimes you do commonly in the molecular lab you combine two and sometimes three different plasmids together